Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church in my church office uh, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our theme on overcoming spiritual blindness, the eyes of faith. God, help me to see perhaps what's already there that I'm just missing. It's not that you didn't bless it. It's just that I'm blind to what's already there. Open my eyes that I might see. Today, I want to talk to you about the blindness of prejudice, of, of seeing people as being incapable or a, are, are incapable of blessing you simply because they are of a different race the, or, or gender um, or just because they're different. It's called prejudice. Uh, that's a wonderful story in Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 10, where Jesus applauds someone who is not a Jew and, and uses him as a model of faith to other Jews. In fact, he's a Roman soldier. It says, and when he finished speaking to the people, he entered Capernaum. A Roman captain there had a servant who was on his deathbed. He prized him highly and didn't want to lose him. When he heard Jesus was back, he sent leaders from the Jewish community asking him to come and heal his servant. They came to Jesus and urged him to do it, saying he deserves this. He loves our people. He even built our, our meeting place, our church, if you will. Jesus went with them. When he was still quite far from the house, the captain sent friends to tell him, Master, you don't have to come to, uh, to all this trouble. I'm not that good a person, you know. I'm embarrassed for you to come to my house, even embarrassed to come to you in person. Just give the order and my servant will get well. I'm a man under orders. I also give orders. I tell one soldier to go and he and he goes, another come and he comes, my slave, do this and he does it. Taken aback, Jesus addressed the accompanying crowd. I've yet to come across this kind of simple trust anywhere in Israel. In other words, Jesus is using a Roman soldier, a Gentile, as the greatest example of faith that he had ever experienced. The very people who are supp supposed to know about God uh, and how he works. When the messenger got back home, they found the servant up and well. My God. This is a story really about, about prejudice. And there's no blindness like the blindness of prejudice. Now, what is prejudice? Well, break the word down. Pre means before and judge, judge. And that simply means prejudice it simply means to judge a person before you know the person or to judge a person before you know the facts about a person or a group of people. It's ignorance. And we tend to judge people without knowing the facts about people or judge a person without knowing the facts about persons. We all have our prejudices. Another word for prejudice is bias, or what's called implicit bias. Get the handle on those two words, implicit bias. And what is implicit bias? Implicit bias is when in your mind you group and categorize people on the basis of their race, and you attribute to them certain attitudes, certain actions, or uh, certain abilities, certain capacities. So you take a, for example, a black person, you will put them in a group and you will say all black people are a particular way. That's implicit bias. It's implicit because the word implicit means that you're not conscious of the fact that you do it. There was a young man who was shot in Cleveland and he was 12 years old. He was playing with a toy gun. He's 12 years old. The police come because somebody reported that Tamir Rice had a gun in his hand, but he was a toy gun playing with it, and the police shot and killed him. 
because in the mind of the police officer, young 12 year old Tamir Rice, he had already grouped him as a violent person. Therefore, a black kid with or a black person with a gun who was just 12 years old. But in his mind, the cop's mind, he was older than 12 years old that he was up to something mischievous because he had already in his mind had certain implicit biases that he had about the young man. Let me give you another phrase you need to know. I define prejudice as judging before implicit bias. It's when we group people and we attribute certain qualities to the people that we have put in certain groups and certain categories. And here's something else, confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is that once you believe certain certain things, you then go looking for evidence to confirm the biases that you already have. Um, many people watch Fox News, for example, because they already have a certain pre-established belief about how the world is. And then they go to Fox News because Fox News gives them the evidence to confirm what they already believe. They're blind because they don't want to open up their eyes to some, some new possibilities that I may be seeing things wrong. Now, when it comes to prejudice and bias, grouping certain people, especially as it relates to black Americans, in the United States of America, which many might call the United Hates of America because of how we have always been in each other's throats on the basis of race. You can use the word uncle to, uh, as, a, as, a, as a model, as a paradigm, to, uh, to understand how blacks are seen through the lens of most Americans, most white Americans. And here it is, this is what uncle stands for. The uncle stands for you, that blacks are unintelligent. That's a belief, that blacks are unintelligent. In non-leaders, that blacks are not good leaders. C, blacks are criminal. L, blacks are lazy. E, blacks are excuse makers. Now, if this is your bias and your prejudice, then you're going to make certain assumptions about certain people without getting to know the people because this is your assumption. Well, one thing that Jesus did for his contemporaries was that they had grouped most Romans, Romans, Gentiles in a particular category, namely that they were cruel, that they were, they were inhumane. And for the most part, they weren't. But here was a Roman soldier who didn't fit the category. Here was a Roman soldier who we are told helped build their church, helped build their synagogue. And when his, his servant was sick, he sent his, his messengers to Jesus asking that Jesus would come. And guess what Jesus did? Jesus went. He was going to go into the man's house, which no good Jew would do. No good Jew would go into the house of a Gentile. But Jesus always breaks barriers and was willing to go into the house of a Gentile. Before Jesus could even get into the house, the Roman soldier sent a messenger to Jesus and said, there's no need to come. I am a man that is under authority and I have authority. And that's important. He says, I'm under authority and I have authority. Uh, which is to say that if you want things to get under you, you that's supposed to be under you, you got to get under the things that are supposed to be over you. God is supposed to be over you. Get under God, and things that are supposed to be under you tend to get under you. You get under who you're supposed to get under, namely God, and things get under you because you submitted to authority. Things will begin to submit to you. And he said to Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. Just say the word and my son will be healed. And Jesus was surprised and said, I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. The people who are supposed to know about faith don't have the faith that this Gentile man has. And when the servants went back to tell the man what Jesus said, the, 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 the servant who was sick was already healed. The point is, is that you would not expect 
such faith from a person who was not a Jew. And this is Jesus's way of saying that there's a blindness of prejudice in which we put people in groups and people in categories. And we just don't think they can do it. I know what that's like because I'm the president of a historical black college and university. The, the, we're, our college, Simmons College, is the only college that has ever made a comeback in American history. No HBCU has made a comeback. And when I became president of the college, we were not an HBCU at the time, there were a lot of white liberals who said he can't do it. They talked down against me. They didn't think I had the capacity to do it. In fact, they said he ought to just stick to preaching and interpreting the Bible because people love to put you in categories. There are many white people who love black people as long as black people stay in their place. Don't you let anybody tell you but God what your place is supposed to be. Don't you let anyone tell you that you can't be certain things, or be a person, be what God has called you to be or do certain things because they want to put restrictions on you just because they are blind by their prejudices. I said, if God be for me, who can be against me? And we did something unprecedented. We got accredited. Uh, we got HBCU status, uh, status. And if you go online and look at the list of HBCUs, guess what? Simmons College is now on the list the last designated HBCU. We're the oldest, one of the oldest HBCUs, but the last designated uh, because I, by the grace of God, I did not submit to the prejudices and the categories that they wanted to put me in. It's called prejudice and it, it, it can be very debilitating. Don't you do that to other people. You and don't let other people do it to you. The Roman soldier said to Jesus, you don't have to come into my house. I have enough faith that if you just speak the word, it can be done. And Jesus said, boy, I like this kind of faith. What kind of faith do you have? What kind of faith do you have? Let God open your eyes and expand your vision so that you too can overcome prejudice, the myopia of prejudice. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people, we pray. Help us to overcome prejudice and don't let anyone categorize us and group us because of our race in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me today for another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, uh, tonight we're having Bible study and I hope you will join us tonight in Bible study. Uh, be with us tonight. Um, the worship service actually begins really at 630 with the pre-worship experience. Please come out and find out what's going on at the church and our perspective on the news of the day. And then the Bible study begins at seven o'clock. So you come and join us. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We'll get back with you. But until then, until we get together tonight for Bible study, look, during COVID-19, don't forget, stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. I'll see you tonight in church.